I had a couple of viewers ask if I would check out Audio Bookshelf as part of my Beginners U Green NAS series and share a setup video. Audio Bookshelf is a free and open source self hosted media server for managing and streaming audiobooks and podcasts. Just like Jellyfin, you can store and stream your own private collection of media ad free without the need for a subscription. In this video, I explain how to set up Audio Bookshelf on the Ugreen NAS using Docker, as well as walking through the steps of setting up your Audio Bookshelf account. The best way to think of Audio Bookshelf is that it emulates popular audiobook and podcast services like Audible and Audiobooks, but you don't need to pay a subscription for ad-free access and playback of the content. You download all the content and store them on your own storage device. In this video, as part of my ongoing Ugreen NAS series, I explain the process of creating that storage on your NAS and the setup for streaming to client apps on your phone, tablet and computer. It's worth noting that just like other open source applications, for media playback like Jellyfin and productivity services like Nextcloud, the basic setup works on your local network. If you want to access your audio bookshelf library outside of your home or office network, you'll need to use a third-party service or set up your own hosting solution. I've covered off how to use Tailscale VPN in my previous videos for Jellyfin, Image and Nextcloud. I've included a chapter on this video to cover off remote access again. However, for a full walkthrough, you should check out my previous video about setting up Tailscale for Jellyfin. Sometime in the near future, I hope to put together a video about other VPN solutions too. The very first step is to download and install Docker if you don't already have it installed on your Ugreen NAS using UGOS, either via a browser or the official UGOS app on your computer. As covered in my previous video, Docker is a program that enables you to manage different applications on your Ugreen NAS. Docker can be thought of as an application platform with its own marketplace for installable programs known as containers. These containers are self-contained units designed to execute specific tasks. A container is established using a blueprint known as an image or updating a YAML code template. This process is essential for creating the Audio Bookshelf Server container, which facilitates connecting the Audio Bookshelf web interface and app to your NAS. Just like Jellyfin, Image and Nextcloud, you need to prepare your NAS for hosting all the files and telling your Audio Bookshelf clients where to find your content. The first step is to create folders on your NAS to store the audio files, configuration files and metadata needed to organise your library. Navigate to your shared folder on your NAS using either the Ugreen NAS UGOS web interface or the desktop app. Create a master folder called Audio Bookshelf. Inside this folder, create folders called Audiobooks, Podcasts, Config and Metadata. Next, copy the Docker Compose. This is the set of instructions your Ugreen NAS requires to build a media server. The template for the Docker Compose is available via a link in the description. To match your personal storage directories, you'll need to replace the placeholder information for the directories. This information explains to Audio Bookshelf Server where to find the necessary files. Next, open Docker on your NAS in UGOS. Then, navigate to Project and then click Create. Name the container Audio Bookshelf in lowercase. The storage path will automatically populate. To ensure that you match the directory, you can right click on each folder, click on Properties and copy the directory string within the UI and paste it into the YAML. You also need to change the time zone to match your location. I've included a link in the description so you can find your own local time zone. Next, copy the entire YAML text and paste it into the field next to the number 1. Finally, click Deploy and it will take a few minutes to start before you can click OK and then the server is up and running.
The next step is to create an audio bookshelf account to link your clients such as the mobile app or audio bookshelf on the web to your NAS. On your computer, open a new browser window and type in your NAS's IP address followed by the port number specified in your Docker Compose. This will launch the audio bookshelf web user interface. The first step is to create an admin account with a username and password. The next screen will ask you to log in with those new credentials. After logging in, you'll be presented with the main user interface. The first step is to tell Audio Bookshelf where to look for your NAS libraries for your audiobooks and podcasts. Click on Add your first library. This step will launch a dialog so you can link your audiobook folder on your NAS. Name your library. You can also change the icon representing the library, plus choose the metadata provider in the other boxes. Audio Bookshelf will use one of the listed sources to gather the audiobook cover and description for use in your library. Click on Browse for your folder to tell Audio Bookshelf where to find your audiobooks. You can perform the same process for your podcast folder. When complete, you can start to upload your audiobook and podcast files by clicking on the Upload button. Once uploaded, Audio Bookshelf will take a moment to scan your library and then the files will be available for playback. libraries are separated and to view the audiobooks versus the podcasts you click on the navigation at the top. There are a number of ways to build your audiobook and podcast library. For the purposes of this video I'll just cover off ways that aren't a breach of terms of use for paid platforms. For books, popular sites like LibriVox, Gutenberg.org, LoyalBooks.com and the Internet Archive include license-free audiobooks available for download. Podcasts are a little more difficult to find. Most of the larger podcasts are DRM protected. While you can download and play podcasts even within offline app like Spotify, you're unable to access the file to add to your audiobook shelf library. Some podcasts have their own websites where they host episodes. These websites often include a direct download link for each episode's audio file, which is typically MP3. You can find this by looking for the download button. Some podcast players and apps are designed to download episodes and save them as accessible files on your computer or device. Gpodder is an open source podcast client for Windows, Mac and Linux that allows you to download podcasts in batches and save them as local files. Podcast Addict is a popular Android app that downloads episodes of MP3 files to your device's media folder, though you may have to manually rename them. The web version of Pocket Casts often allows you to download some podcasts as MP3 files. Some podcasts still use RSS feeds, which you can use to directly add entire series of podcast content to Audio Bookshelf. All you have to do is find the RSS link and copy the URL. Then, within the main homepage of Audio Bookshelf for Podcasts, click on Add underneath Library and paste the URL. Then, if you want Audio Bookshelf to automatically download episodes for you, check the box and save. Just like Jellyfin and Nextcloud apps, you'll need to connect your Audio Bookshelf via your NAS IP address and port number when within range of your home or office network. If you're interested in accessing your library remotely when not connected to your local network, you'll need to set up a solution which I cover off in the next chapter of this video. 
However, you can always simply download the content you want to listen to directly to your device while connected to your network before leaving home. The files will be stored locally on your device and will be available for playback even when not connected to your server. Like Jellyfin and Image, Audio Bookshelf is a free, open source service requiring self-configuration for remote access. To access your Audio Bookshelf outside of your home network, you must set up a remote access yourself. There is no centralized infrastructure provided for internet access to your Audio Bookshelf account. The simplest method is to use Tailscale VPN unless you have the necessary expertise to create your own hosting solution. For a detailed description of Tailscale, check out my previous video about how to set up Jellyfin remote access using Tailscale. That video gives you the entry-level walkthrough on understanding and setting up Tailscale on your NAS. Just like Jellyfin, you'll need to use your unique Tailscale IP and the port number for the Audio Bookshelf container to access Audio Bookshelf when away from your home network. The NAS's IP address can be found in your Tailscale machine list. The port number can be found in the web URL interface, in the container, or in the YAML Docker Compose. By default, it's 13378 unless you change it. Now, when you want to access Audio Bookshelf remotely, you must remember to turn on your Tailscale app on your phone or device to connect to your NAS at home. Thank you for watching, and as always, it would be great if you were to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more content on personal technology and the connected home.